Welcome back to How to Cake It. Yolanda couldn't be here today, but I am Landa the Cake Witch, and she asked me to take over. So of course, I caked a witch hat. Tell us how you made this witch hat cake, please, Landa. Well, I'm a witch, so I just snapped my fingers, and there it was. Thanks for watching. <laughs> To make this witch hat cake, I baked 11 pounds of my ult or of Yolanda's ultimate chocolate cake batter, and I dyed it black because I'm a witch. I have six round cakes in total in different sizes from eight inches down to four inches. Once I leveled my cakes, I also layered them by cutting them in half horizontally. Now I have 12 layers of black chocolate. Well, apparently I have to call somebody named Sir Squeeze a lot to help me simple syrup these cakes. He was pretty good. It's not my type, I, I prefer warlocks. I'm very impressed that you know what a warlock is. I do. Good. A warlock put a ring on it. <laughs> I want to fill this cake with bright orange buttercream. It's Halloween, so I dye some of my Italian meringue buttercream orange, and I mean orange. This hair is just getting in the way. <laughs> it's just the price you pay when you have such beautiful hair. It's now time to fill and stack my layers, starting with the largest layers on the bottom and working my way down in size so that the smallest layers are on top. Now, if you're gonna do this at home, you're not a witch. So you should definitely add dowels and a board to the center of this cake. I am a witch, so I was able to make it stay together for the final cut. And then I carefully put it in the fridge to chill. I need this buttercream to be set. It's set! I really wish it was this easy. It's time to carve this cake into a witch hat. So all I'm gonna do is follow sort of the natural A-line of the cake, and I wanna carve the top of the cake just to a small sort of one inch circle. So I'm using a serrated knife, cutting all the way down to the bottom edge of the bottom cake. The cake was a bit wobbly, it is very tall, so I just slowly made my way around the cake. Abra cake dabra! That's how you do that. It's time to crop out and chill. That's actually kind of creepy. I know, that's what I was going yeah, for. Yeah, it was pretty good. For my crumb coat and chill, I'm using black chocolate ganache. This cake needs more darkness. Someone commented and said that their kid has a megaphone and just runs around the house all day just yelling crumb coat and chill. Oh, I'm four sorry. Four or five-year-old kid, something like that. I'm really sorry about that. Because <laughs> I have a four or five-year-old kid and that, <laughs> I would lose it. <laughs> By the way guys, all of my bundles are on sale so you can take your caking game to the next level with the right tools. Just head to howtocakeit.com. Howtocakeit.com. It just doesn't sound dark no matter how you say it. Once my creme coat is chilled, I'm going to ice this cake once again with more black chocolate ganache. My cake is beautifully iced. It already looks like a pretty good witch hat, but I need to cover it with black fondant. Do you see my theme here? Darkness. Yeah. The first thing I need to do is measure my cake. I'm using a fabric measuring tape and I'm measuring the circumference of my cake down at the bottom, around the middle, and then up at the top. And now I need to roll out my black fondant in a triangle. A triangle is a really rich um, shape symbol, right? Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. How do you know so much about us? I just love witches. Have you dated a witch? Yeah, a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm getting nervous. Even though I'm a witch, I'm doing this by hand. And what I want to do is pick up this fondant triangle, this giant black fondant triangle, and wrap it around my cake so that I have one seam at the back. But guess what? Even though I wasn't using my powers, it worked the first time. <laughs> I need to do a moisturizing spell tonight. <laughs> if there's too much excess fondant at the top, you'll want to cut that away immediately because any extra weight at the top is just going to pull the fondant and drag it off the cake. 
And then I used a fondant smoother and my hands to help me wrap that fondant around the cake. Once I was happy, I laid a ruler up against the back where the fondant overlapped itself. And then I used the tip of a sharp paring knife to cut down along the ruler. And then I just tucked the fondant down at the bottom and cut away the excess. I also need to cut away the excess fondant at the top, and that's because I wanted like a little curl. That's the design of this mm. new witch hat. So for this, I'm using black gum paste, and I'm just gonna roll it into almost like a cone. So I'm rolling it out, but it's thicker at one end and thinner almost to a point at the other. And now I just place it on top and, you know, sort of smooth it over like a cute little curl. Tim Burton would be. Really yes! Yeah. It's, you're right. The next thing I want to do is patch the seam between my gum paste curl and the top of the cake with a little bit of fondant paste. You don't want to see the paste, you just want to fill in that seam. And while I'm at it, I'm going to fill in that back seam all along the body of the hat. Uh, now I'm doing double duty. Yeah. Not only am I the cake witch, I was the seam hider. <laughs> is there a bug on my face? <laughs> this is the problem with this one. Oh. So to decorate this cake, I was thinking of stripes. Speaking of Tim Burton, it's a bit Beetlejuice inspired. So for these stripes, I'm going to roll out some purple fondant. Then I'm going to use a ruler and a sharp paring knife to cut one inch lengths of purple fondant that I will apply onto the hat as stripes. I rolled two sheets of purple fondant and then I also rolled out some bands that were longer for the bottom of the hat, just to make sure I make it all the way around. I need to carefully flip my stripes over, brush on a little bit of water and then wrap them around my hat. Always keep in mind where your seam is. So keep your seam at the back and this way you can also place the seams of your stripes at the back of the cake. When placing my stripes on the cake, I also used one of the stripes themselves as the spacer because I wanted, you know, purple stripe, black stripe, purple stripe, black stripe, and I wanted them to all be even. So as it turns out, my stripes aren't quite long enough. It's because I didn't have a board that was the length of the circumference of my hat. So I ended up having to have two seams on some of my stripes. Oh no. If it gets warm while you're doing this, pop your stripes back in the fridge, let them chill out a bit, and start again. Because sometimes when the fondant is too warm and you pick it up with your hands, it just sort of stretches. I don't want any warped stripes on my new witch hat. How to Cake It is in full Halloween mode. Over on Step by Step, Sam is back and she has made a zombie cake, which is perfect for this time of year. And there's a new family member, Veronica, who has caked us a Halloween cat cake. Oh, I have cat nails. <laughs> I wanted to give this hat a bit of like a floral appeal. I actually wanted to make it look like there were leather flowers on my hat. Mm, sweet. Mm-hmm. Because I am a chic witch. The hair is ridiculous. It's 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 worse than my hair. I can't believe I found hair that's worse than my hair. I'm shedding like a golden retriever. <laughs> this is awful. I rolled my black gum paste into long bands, trimmed one edge and then I brushed some water along the other long edge. All you have to do is sort of pick it up and roll it in on itself while sort of puckering, is that the right word? I never heard that. Puckering or like cinching, cinching. That's more fashionable. Okay, cinch the rest of the gum paste as you roll it up. So it's a very sort of whimsical looking leather flower. It doesn't look like leather yet, but we'll get there. To give them life, to make sure that they dry with life, I took little pieces of soft tissue and placed them between the layers or the petals of the flower. Otherwise the weight of the gum paste might make them all dry flat. These flowers are great because you can also make them ahead of time. If you do that, they'll dry out a bit and they'll be easier to apply to your witch hat. If they're too soft, when you apply them to the side, they might kind of shrink down. I hope that happens to the evil witch's hat. <laughs> Once my flowers are set, I remove the tissue carefully and now I want to paint them to give them that leather look. I mix together some black gel food coloring, food grade alcohol, and I want the paint to be sort of on the thicker side. Wait till the other witches see this one. They're gonna be so jealous. I know. 
they're gonna stress eat the entire cake probably. You know what? I think those other witches are doing this to my hair. I think they put a spell on me so that all my hair would fall out. But even if that happens, I'm still gonna look amazing in this witch hat. You should turn them into frogs. I'm gonna turn them all into watermelons. <laughs> Yes. So they can all just roll around together. <laughs> I needed to make the brim for this hat ahead of time because I need it to dry. I found the perfect tray that I wanted to use to mold my brim. So I simply have to rub vegetable shortening all over the surface of the bottom of the tray. This is so that my gum paste doesn't stick. Now I need to roll out my gum paste, a bit larger than the tray and about an eighth of an inch thick and then carefully drape it onto the tray. Now I have to make sure that I drape it upside down because I don't want all that icing sugar to be on top of the brim of my hat. You know what I'm saying? And then I carefully pick up the tray and hold my sharp paring knife flush to the tray and then just trim the gum paste all the way around. Now I can set this aside to dry. I did this about a week before I made it. Halfway through the drying process, I carefully loosened the gum paste from the tray placed a pizza pan on top and flipped it over and removed the tray. This way I'm giving the top of the brim some time to dry as well. Wait until you see what I have in store for the brim. Those witches won't know what hit them. <laughs> the first thing I need to do is lay an eight inch round cake pan on the center of the brim and then just mark that circle with the tip of a sharp knife. There's no point in me decorating the part of the hat brim that will be covered with cake. Now I'm going to coat the top of the brim of my hat with a glittery, sparkly black piping gel. <laughs> nice. I'm a witch, I'm not using clear piping gel. I carefully brush this gel all the way around and then I used some black glittery disco dust and I just sprinkled it all over that glittery gel. Sprinkles, it was like raining black shiny dust. Share this video immediately before I turn you into a watermelon. Ha ha ha. That was a nice bitch laugh. Wasn't it? To take care of the excess black sparkles all over the brim of the hat, I'm using one of these. So I use this dust blower to just blow away any excess disco dust and leave a nice perfect layer. Before moving on, it's very important to clean up all the dust because it gets everywhere. <sighs> I don't think I can ride out on my old broom with this new hat. No. I need like, I need the Mercedes of brooms. Oh, Londa. Yes? I happen to have researched the world's most expensive broom that you might like. Really? The bristles are made out of shredded $100 bills. That's hey. ridiculous, but I want it. <laughs> Is that enough? Here you go. Thank Get you. me the broom. <laughs> the next thing I want to do is create a nice edge for the edge of my brim. Um, I'm thinking jewels. So you're really going over the top? Oh, I'm side. going over the top. The other witches aren't going to be able to handle this. <laughs> I rolled little cords of black gum paste pressed it into my mold, and then I used the side of a sharp knife to carefully cut away the excess, and then you just turn the mold over and tip it out. I made a bunch of those, and then I flipped the jewels over and brushed them with more of my black glitter piping gel, and glued them to the side of the brim all the way around. Next week, I'm making a cake for an upcoming movie that I'm very excited about. So if you don't wanna miss it, Subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. Or I'll turn you into a watermelon. <laughs> okay, we have to take it easy with the watermelon turning thing. I won't be back next week. I've got to get it all out. But it's time to add my leather flowers. I use royal icing. I didn't have black royal icing. I used royal icing to glue my flowers to the cake. It's nice and sturdy and they're quite heavy, so I did use toothpicks to help ensure they'd stay in place. I also made some extra singular jewels with my mold, just in case my hat needs a little more bling. I like bling. <laughs> and then I add some of my jewels up at the top. I created like a little flower out of jewels and I added a couple more jewels around the flower at the bottom, like little jewel leaves, if you will. And what is a hat 
without black feathers. So I added a couple of big black feathers behind the flowers and I feel bad for the witches who are going to be there. I feel good for me because we're not really going to eat it. That's a good point. Thank you for watching my episode. Yolanda will be back next week. And don't forget to check out the zombie cake and the Halloween black cat cake over on How to Cake It Step by Step. Are we done now? Yeah. I need to do my moisturizing spell. I'm really need to eat the cake. I really want to know which witch did this to my hair. Let's eat cake. <laughs>